breathe in, breathe in. Dungaree is not a wise choice. Oh, it's a beast. Right then, good morning folks and welcome back to the channel. And today we are making, you have guessed it, yet another power bank video. Arguably, it's the best power bank in its field right now, in its size category, but another power station video nonetheless. Now, for those of you that don't want to watch another power station video, I'm gonna let you into a little secret. I don't wanna make another power station video. Uh, the eagle-eyed of you will notice that I am not in my own van, I am in someone else's van, and I'll explain more of that in a second. But first, let's talk about the situation I found myself in. So this is the EcoFlow Delta Max, and it is huge. It is huge in power source, and it's a pretty big unit in itself. Now, EcoFlow have been emailing me for quite some time asking if I'd review their power stations and to be honest you'll all know you know i've got a decent electrical setup in our van this is probably a bit too big for my needs but they kept emailing so i was intrigued then all my youtube mates darren steve i'm talking to you they kept emailing and writing and bombarding me with phone calls you know it's the best it's the best you need to check this out it's amazing it's really good so i had that then I've had subscribers that have obviously seen other YouTubers review this and are genuinely interested. And because we've reviewed power stations in the past, I'm assuming that my opinion is a little bit valid. So they've been asking for that. Then of course, because we've documented our entire van build, we get a lot of questions. What's the easiest, simplest way to install a decent electrical system into our van? Do I need to learn all the faff that comes with doing electrics? And then finally, my friend Matt, whose van this is, was trying to upgrade his current motorhome. Now this is a factory bought motorhome, so it's very, very nice, very, very comfortable. But let's be honest, the electrical system that they put in these vans is, I don't want to swear, but it's not the best. So they're generally designed for to sit on campsites plugged in. So all those things are caved. In the end, I was like, do you know what? I need to test it out. So I got back in touch with EcoFlow and said, yep, please do send me one. I'd love to check it out. I'd love to review it, but, but I want to give it to my friend Matt so that he can upgrade his electrical system. And Matt's a busy guy, you know, newborn, newborn baby, job. He's got a lot on learning and trying to fiddle with electrics in an existing system. It's just a pain in the ass. So we gave this bad boy a go. This is the EcoFlow Delta Max. It's the second biggest one in the range. Um, we're gonna go through all the technical specs in a minute, but what I wanna discuss fundamentally, can this power an entire van? Is this an alternative solution to add in your own electrical system? And can it upgrade an existing camper van to take it off grid? So we'll do the technical specifications first for all you tech geeks, and then we'll discuss my opinion and what I think you can and maybe cannot use it for. So the first thing you notice about this unit, apart from it is a little bit heavy, it is expandable. So this is something that not many, if any, of the other brands are doing. So here, you've got two plug-in ports and you can add extra batteries. So this one, uh, on its own, has a 2000 watt hour, 2016 watt hour to be precise, which is approximately 166 amp hour capacity. So that's big in itself, but you can also expand on that and add new batteries to it. So that's one thing that I think is really cool about this if you're looking for a full system. <coughs> I'm gonna be like Arnie before I finish this review. So on here, you can charge it. Now, arguably, this is probably the best feature of this, this unit, is it's got what's called, they're calling fast charge. Now you can charge this up, all 2000 watt hour capacity of it, from naught to 80% in an hour. That is ridiculously fast charging. So, because it's portable, you can maybe take this all over the place to charge it up. So you can charge it up in your house before you go, pop it back in the van. It's insanely quick. Not only is it insanely quick, it's also insanely powerful. So it's got a 2,400 watt inverter, pure sine wave in here with a peak of, I think around about 3,600. So that's massive. So if you wanna run, you know, things like a coffee machine and anything that draws a lot of power, maybe even your water heater, you know, your Truma water heater in your van that you've already got, this will run it without tripping. So that is huge. It will drain the battery quite quick because obviously they're high power items, but if you want to make a quick coffee and your machine's quick, this is going to do it. Uh, we spoke about capacity, 2016 watt hours, 166 amp hours approximately. That's huge. So for example, in my van, I've got 200 amp hours of lithium battery. You're getting almost the same in this. Now it does weigh 22 kilos, so it's quite a heavy unit. But that being said, my lithium batteries are about 11 or 12 kilos each. So it's no different to having lithium batteries in your van at that same weight. Again, it's portable, so you need to be relatively strong to lift it, but you know, I can do it and Emily does it at a breeze. You can also charge it up via solar. Now this thing will take 800 watts of solar. So obviously you're not gonna be able to use that fast charge feature when charging up by solar, but because you can plug in 800 watts, that's a considerable amount. And you don't have to use their own panels. It will take anything. So as long as you're not 
put, trying to put in more than 800 watts and I think it's between 11 and 100 volts, something like that, it will take any, you know, mix of panels and it's got an MC4 connector so for instance if I wanted this in my van I could just connect the panel on my roof straight into this and it will charge like my existing system does so that's pretty cool. It comes with a 24 month warranty which is pretty decent so if you have any problems with it you should be able to send it back to the manufacturer and get it fixed. Now let's have a look at the ports that are on it. So here we've got four USB-A ports, which is your normal USB. Uh, one or two of those are fast charge as well, so if you want to charge your phone up really quickly, that'll do that. You've got two USB-C ports. Now here's one for creators in particular, or anyone that's working on the road. These will output 100 watts, which means I could plug my laptop directly into this through USB-C, and instead of having to run it through an inverter in the, either in the van or through the inbuilt inverter in this, I haven't then losing uh, power from the conversion where it's converting 240 down to 12 and then outputting again at like 9, 19 volts, I think the laptop is. So yeah, that USB-C, I've not seen that yet on any other design, so I really like that feature. If we turn it on, you've got all your usual, your state of charge, what's coming in. So if you've got it plugged into solar, you can see how many watts are coming in. Again, how many watts are going out. So when you plug in items, you know, like your coffee machine, you can see roughly how much power you need to run that appliance and then how long you'll be able to run that appliance for, and then your percentage of what's left in this. So, pretty good. On the back here, you've got four 240 volt sockets. So that's for anything that you want to run through the inverter. So things like hair straighteners, hair dryer, again, coffee machine, blender, all those kinds of things that you can't really run on 12 volt or you can't find decent 12 volt alternatives for, they're going to run straight off the inverter on this. And like I say, with that 2,400 watt inverter, you're pretty much going to be able to power most things. And then you've got your usual, old-fashioned 12 volt cigarette lighter type in there so anything that's still got that that fitting on the end you can run through there so it pretty much covers all bases so anything that you want to run be it 12 volt lights all the way up to a water heater diesel heater fridge it's going to run all of those things now like any battery system it is going to run out quickly if you start trying to run maybe a 12 volt compressor fridge or your water heater and like any battery system it's not just about the size, although size, I've been told, is quite important. Size isn't always the main thing, it's how quickly and how efficiently you can replenish the power you're taking out. So the fact that you can have up to 800 watt solar on this, it's got those MC4 connectors. You could, in theory, have a decent solar setup on your roof that you plug directly into this and keep it topped up when there's sun. When there's no sun, you've then got the option of fast charging, like I say, 0 to 80% in an hour, which is insane. Uh, a friend of mine, Darren from the Urban Motor Home, he actually took his to a store, had a coffee or a tea or so, you know, he sat in there for an hour, plugged it into there and charged it up. So that's always an option. And then plus, of course, you can take it to a campsite, pitch up for a night and charge it from a campsite. You can also charge this via 12 volt as you're driving along. Now, I don't think it's gonna charge up all that quickly because your van will only be able to output a certain amount of watts into this. My friend Matt did try it and he said in about two hours driving, he put about 15% back in, which is higher than I thought actually. Uh, so it, you can charge it while you're driving, but bear in mind if you're all the way down at zero or 10, 20 percent, it's going to take quite a long time to get up to, to fully charged. Also, the solar panel from the same manufacturer is also really, really good. So again, this has been tested. It's a 130 watt panel, the one they've sent us, and I will stick some B-roll shots over the top because it's quite a cool design of panel. From a 130 watt panel, we was getting 120 watts out of it. Now that is huge. That is hugely efficient. By comparison, we set up the same cheap panel at the same time, and I think that was outputting around 90 watts. So a massive difference if you want to go for their own panels but again one thing I really like about this is if you've already got portable panels they can be used with this as well you can charge this and discharge it at the same time which means you can have solar coming in and you can also have all your stuff plugged in and have power coming out so my advice to anyone with anything like this or any battery system at all would be to try and utilize and charge everything up during the day so for example the biggest bonus about having this if you've got a pre-built van and you can take your van off grid because you can plug because of that huge inverter you can plug your van straight into this so whatever battery setup whether it be a single 100 amp hour lead acid battery you can just plug your van into this you can then set your solar panels up so the sun is charging this and at the same time this is charging up your van and this is the easiest way by far to get your current factory camper van build off grid because at the minute let's be honest they are this they're sh they're designed to sit on campsites they don't give you a lot of spec and if you do want to mess around with it you've got to start tapping into things like the sergeant system trying to find out what all the cables do what they're for upgrading most of the components because they're not really designed for off-grid this is going to stand you the easiest chance of getting your factory built camper van off-grid
Now, what about if you're doing a self-build? Now, obviously, cost. If you look at the price of these, they're not cheap. So everybody always says, yeah, it looks great. It looks really easy. It looks really simple. I love it, but it just costs so much money. So we're going to compare the cost of buying one of these and just plonking it in a van and going to actually building your own system. Now, I'm going to refer to my notepad because I can't remember the cost of everything, but I did cost out my own electrical system. So batteries. Now, in my van, I've got two lithium batteries. Now, the, bat the my batteries are cost around about 1500 quid, but the technology in those batteries is slightly better than the technology in this. So I'm going to say about a thousand pounds worth of batteries. Obviously, I've got 200 amps in there. This is only 166 amps, so I've got slightly more in there. So let's take that 1500 pounds, take it down to a thousand pounds. Mains charger, my mains charger cost me £140. The MPPT charge controller, which is what takes that solar power and converts it into energy to be stored in the battery, my MPPT controller cost me £260. So there's one of these built in here already. My battery to battery charger, so that gives me the capability of charging my batteries whilst I'm driving through my B2B. Now I will say my B2B will charge up my batteries a lot quicker than this is going to charge through 12 volts. However, you do have the capability to charge this from 12 volt whilst you're driving. So my B2B was about 190 pounds. In fact, it was 240 pounds, but I've knocked it down to 190 because of that loss of energy. An inverter. Now, I don't have an inverter of this size in my van. I've only got a small inverter. So I had a quick look online and the cheapest inverter of a similar sort of size, pure sine wave, is around about 300 pounds, 500 pounds for decent ones, but we'll say 300 quid for the calculations. Cables, fuses, etc. all your consumables that you need to fit an electrical setup in. So you will need wires to wire your batteries together. You'll need wires to run to the MPPT, to every single charger, to the fuse box, to all the different switches, to all the different appliances. It adds up. So I've done a rough estimate. I spent around about £150 on consumables. And then there's obviously tools. Now, most people who haven't fitted an electrical system don't have the tools for that. So I costed out, I spent about roughly a hundred pound on various different bits and pieces of tools that I needed to be able to fit the system in my van at the time. So all that added together is 2,140 pounds. Now this is 2,000 pound retail. So you're looking at around about the same price, if not cheaper to buy this than it is to install your own. Now I haven't taken into consideration at all in that calculation time and labor now let me tell you that installing your own electrical system into a camper van if you've never done it before is ridiculously time consuming i would hazard a guess that i spent months maybe an hour or two hours every night for a good few months before even attempting to fit mine in there then there's like i say the time of actually doing it the faff of crawling through the cupboards <laughs> then the upgrades and changing things as I've gone along. If you've seen recent videos, you'll see I rewired my whole system and it was a faff. So if you're not comfortable learning that or doing that, this is definitely the easiest way. Maybe not the best way, and I'll get to that in a minute, but by far the easiest way and probably cost the same, maybe cheaper than doing it yourself. I've not included solar on my calculations uh, purely because everyone's different about the amount of solar they're going to have. So we've got 300 watts on our roof. You will want, I would say, a decent amount of solar if you're going to be using this regularly and you're a high power usage. But again, that's subject to everyone's different needs. So one panel might be enough for you if you're just making, I don't know, the odd coffee every day, not really running a big fridge, etc., etc. So that'll be down to your individual needs. Now let's get back to maybe not the best way. Now. I'm very grateful that I learnt my own electrics. However, I can appreciate that not everybody wants to do that. My biggest concern with this as a complete alternative, and it always has been, I've said it in every power station review video, is in my system, if something breaks, I can just take out that one component, order a new one, replace it. So I might not have any solar for a week or two, but I will have mains charging. If there's a problem in this, obviously you've got to send the whole unit back. So that is my only concern. That is the one thing that would prevent me from putting this in instead of my own built system. However, with that being said, that's down to personal choice. I know nothing about mechanics. So if my starter motor or my alternator was to go, I'd have to hand over my entire van uh, to a garage for them to fix that issue. So again, that's down to personal choice. I don't want to learn mechanics. I don't want to carry the tools to fix my van. So if you don't want to learn electrics and you don't want the faff or maybe you're not well enough to crawl around doing it, there's arguments for both sides and everybody's different. So if you are genuinely looking for a really easy way to do this without all the faff, then this is definitely the one. And this one, from all the research that I've done and all the units that I've compared for its size range, is probably the best in its field at the minute. And that is purely because of that fast charging and 
and those USB-C ports that give out that 100 watts. There's not one on the market in this size range that can beat it. Now that being said, I'm very happy with my existing power pack. You'll all know that I've got a power station in the van. This is too big for what I need, but it's absolutely perfect for what Matt needed. So he can now take his camper van off grid. He can plug his camper van into this. He can recharge the van and he can carry on without having to rely on going to campsites pretty much every night. Now, some of you might say, why not just get a petrol generator? Obviously there's pluses to this over that. It's far quieter, so you're not gonna be drawing attention to yourself. It's far cleaner, so it's better for the environment. Um, it's cheaper to run. They can't tax you on the sun. I mean, at the minute, the tax on the ridiculously high fuel price is probably crippling us all a little bit. So as long as there's sun, you can recharge this. If not, like I say, you've either got to take it home, charge it, or do one night on a campsite to charge it up. So still probably cheaper than carrying around dirty, smelly fuel in the back of your van. So then to summarize, is this the easiest way to get off-grid power in your van? It is 100% definitely the easiest. Now, based on the time that I've had with it and the longer, much period, longer period of time that Matt's had with it, I'd comfortably recommend this. Like I say, I've got many friends that have had this for a long time now and they are still raving about it. So if you are looking for an easy solution to either upgrade your existing electrics in the motorhome that you've got, or if you're doing a self-build and you're looking to build it all from scratch, I definitely recommend this. And also, with the way the world is at the minute, I quite like having power stations because I know I've got a backup reserve. So a few months ago, I was panicking that well, I wasn't gonna be able to get any kind of diesel or whatever to, you know, gas heating in my house. So it's nice to have this as a backup as it is. So I know the cost is extremely high, but hopefully with the calculations of what my setup costs, you can see that actually when you break it down into all the components plus the time and faff involved, this is actually not expensive at all. However, if it is a bit out of your price range, don't worry because of course there's a discount code. Uh, I think you get 5% between the dates that are on the screen now. So this offer is only for those dates. So if you do want to get one, I'll leave the link directly to their website and to the Amazon if you'd much rather order on Amazon. So they're both there for you. And if this is far, far, far too big, but you like the sound of the things I've discussed and you want to go with this brand, they do offer a range. There are smaller models available. Again, that'll all be on the links to their website or to Amazon. And I I think they even do one that's much much bigger so probably too big for me to even look at but yeah if you're looking for something bigger then there's another one there and like I say you can expand this it's expandable which is really cool so hopefully that has answered all the questions that some of you have been asking about what I think of this one um, all the guys that are trying to build vans and are looking for an easy solution hopefully that's helped whether this is the answer for you or not hopefully uh, Matt's gonna be much happier now in fact I know he is because he's raving about it all the time in his van and hopefully no one's going to be pissed off at me for doing yet another solar generator video. So I want to say a massive thank you to EcoFlow. They've been brilliant. The fact that they're letting me give this to help out a friend is fantastic. So a lot of people whinge about us YouTubers getting free stuff all the time. If I can use it to be able to help somebody else out, I'm massively grateful for that. So yeah, EcoFlow, from what I've seen of it and used of it and from what Matt's told me and everybody else has told me, definitely worth a look if you're in the market for a power bank of this size. Right, with that being said, that was an awful lot of waffle. Thank you ever so much for watching. If you do like this kind of content or if you prefer travel content, we are always generally on the road. So do remember to hit the subscribe button, ding the bell, give us a thumbs up, all that jazz or not. I will never ever know if you've done it or not. So it doesn't really matter, but it does help the channel grow. So, you know, just click something, just find something and click it. And I'll see you on the next one.